Hi, my name is Iris and I work for an organization called SIPA or the Scottish Environment Protection Agency. I work in flooding. So do you know what flooding is? Flooding happens when there's too much water in an area when normally there would be a lot less or no water at all. Have you experienced flooding before? Do you know where the water comes from? Let's have a look at what causes flooding. So first, it might be happening because it's raining a lot. And this can then cause what we call surface water flooding. That's when the rain forms a lot of puddles. And you might have experienced that maybe even on your way to school this morning. Now eventually the water will go into our rivers and the river will fill up and fill up and then sometimes there's too much water and it spills over the banks of the river. And that's what we call river flooding. But flooding can also happen from the sea when there are big waves and they can crash onto the shore and then flood roads or properties that are near the coast. And that's what we call coastal flooding. So these are the three main types of flooding that we work with at SIPA. Surface water flooding, river flooding, and coastal flooding. Have you experienced any of these? Or can you maybe think of anything else that causes flooding? Now, is flooding dangerous? Have a look at this picture. Can you see anything there that could be dangerous? So there are a few dangers hidden in this picture. Let's see if you manage to pick some of them out. Have a look at the water. Can you tell how clean it is? It looks quite brown and murky. Why is that? It might be because there's soil and earth in it. Or it might be because the water got into the sewers and pushed out everything that we washed down our toilets, all the poop and germs. And therefore it could be quite dangerous to get in contact with the water because it could make us quite sick. So the best thing to do is to stay safe, stay away. How fast is the water? Can you tell just from looking at it? Have you ever tried standing up in a flume? It can easily knock you over. And so the best thing to do is to stay safe, stay away. And how deep is the water? It doesn't look too deep there. But can you see what's under the water? There might be some holes. For example, sometimes the sewer covers get lifted and then cre can create these deep holes that people have gotten stuck in, unfortunately. Now, just 15 centimeters of fast flowing water can knock you off your feet. Maybe you've got a ruler in your classroom and you can check how high 15 centimeters comes up your legs. Is it your ankles or maybe your shins? Now, let's have a look at this picture. Can we identify any dangers here? This picture shows some flooding at the coast. So the waves are particularly dangerous at, at the coast. The waves themselves, they might knock you over and they can even then drag you back out to sea as the water flows back. The waves can also pick up rocks and stones and throw them onto the shoreline or they might move cars and benches that could knock you over. So again, the best thing to do is to stay safe, stay away. Now, while you might not be at the coast every day, perhaps you sometimes go there on your holidays. So flooding might affect you when you go to school, when you go to visit a friend, or when you're on holiday. It can happen anywhere. So what does the Scottish Environment Protection Agency do? They produce these maps that show where flooding might happen. 
So the blue areas there show where there are some rivers and the purple areas show where the surface water might collect and create really big puddles that could be dangerous. We also show flooding from the sea at the coast and that's in green. You can look at these maps on our website. So maybe that's something you'd like to try later and see if there's any risk of flooding near where your school is or where you live. The Scottish Environment Protection Agency also works with the Met Office and we run Floodline. So you can sign up to receive free flood warnings to your phone or maybe your parents or another adult can do that. In East Ayrshire, we've got flood warnings for Sorn and Katrin on the River Eyre and also for the River Irvine, for Queen's Drive, New Mill Road and Samson Avenue and also for the Kilmarnock water in Kilmarnock. So those are very specific areas where we can predict when flooding is likely to happen and then we can send you a text message. However, we cannot do that for everywhere, so it's still important to look out for flood alerts, which are for large areas, um, which tell you that flooding might happen. Now, how might climate change affect flooding? In Scotland, we expect that the winters are going to be warmer and wetter, so there'll be less snow but more rain. In summer, we think there might be more thunderstorms and those have got really, really heavy rainfall and then the water doesn't have time to drain away. And that's when we can get those big puddles or sometimes even the rivers and the burns might flow over. And there might be rising sea levels due to climate change. And rising sea levels could cause more coastal flooding. So you might want to have a think about what could happen in your area where you live or go to school because of climate change affecting the weather. So have you experienced flooding? Maybe you could have a discussion in the classroom. Do you know where the water came from and how it happened? And what did you do to stay safe? Now, we talked a lot about how flooding might be dangerous and where it might happen. But there are a few things that you can do to make sure you stay safe and stay away. So you can go to the website and check if you are at risk of flooding. If you are in an area where you can get free flood warnings, it's a good idea to sign up for those. And then it's a really good idea to make a plan for what happens uh, if it does flood. And you can consider flooding and maybe even other emergencies. So you could think about where would you go? Is there a safe place you could go to if there is flooding in your school or in your house? Maybe you need to change which route you take if, you, if the flood risk is on your way to school, for example. Also think about what happens and you're not all together with your family. How would you meet up? Where would you meet up? And do you have any pets that you need to take care of? Or is there anything that, need to, that you need to move to a safe place if it is flooding? You can also create an emergency kit. So that might be a box with really useful items. So have a think about what you would need to take with you. Do you need any special medicine? How about a phone and a charger or a battery bank? Some warm clothes and some emergency food? Maybe you could create a plan for where you live about what you're going to do or for your school about if it is flooding, what would you do? And then you can test it out as well when you pretend it is flooding and you can test and see if your plan works. So overall, flooding can affect anyone. It could affect you on your way to school. It could affect you at your home or at your school. But there are things you can do to reduce that risk, like checking if you are at risk of flooding, making a flood plan and preparing a flood kit. And remember, stay safe, stay away. Thanks for listening.